The ISS is an extremely high-tech structure. It took all of the world's best scientists just to build the parts. Even just keeping it in orbit is a tricky job. The ISS is not in zero gravity, as some people assume. On the contrary, the station is actually constantly falling. Let me explain it to you this way. If you build a tower 350 kilometers tall and step off, you wouldn't start flying around the Earth. In fact, you just fall straight to the ground. But while you're falling, you would be weightless until you hit the ground. So if you would fall to the ground, why doesn't the ISS? Well, let's say you took a running jump off that tower. Your forward energy would push you away from the tower while you fell. You would land a further distance away from the tower. The faster and further forward you jumped, the further you'd be when you landed. If you jumped forward 28,000 kilometers per hour, you'd keep falling and fall into orbit. The station is now falling 28,000 kilometers per hour and is orbiting the Earth 15 times a day. It makes a full orbit every 90 minutes. That means that every 90 minutes, the sun rises for the people aboard the ISX. 45 minutes later, it's sunset. Obviously, the astronauts aboard the ISS require oxygen to live. In the beginning, NASA used to fill the airtight rockets with 100% oxygen. Unfortunately, oxygen is very reactive and was the cause of the explosion on the Apollo 1 mission. After that, NASA tried a different approach, which is used on the ISS right now. The air on Earth is comprised of about four parts nitrogen to every part of oxygen. So the ISS is filled up with 70% nitrogen, 25% oxygen, and 5% other gases. This air will quickly get stale, so NASA regularly sends up oxygen and nitrogen, compressed into a liquid, all the way to the ISS. Some oxygen is also made from the water, which is 90% oxygen by weight. When the solar panels which provide the ISS with electricity are exposed to the sun, the electricity shocks some of the oxygen out of the water. The extra hydrogen is dangerously flammable, so it is vented out into space. Speaking of water, though, the water on the ISS is also recycled. About half the water on the ISS comes from waste liquids. That's right, astronauts on the ISS drink their own urine. Don't worry, it is, of course, filtered. In fact, it is filtered so well that it is even more pure than the water we drink on Earth. According to the astronauts, it tastes better, too. Thankfully, the astronauts do not have to drink water taken from solid wastes. Aside from being totally disgusting, it would use up too much energy to purify it. So, the waste is sent back to Earth. The other half of the water is sucked out from the air. Water evaporates from sweat, using the sink and other uses of water. Of course, there is still very little water on the ISS, so astronauts use as little as possible. The average Canadian uses about 550 liters of water every single day. Astronauts use 30 liters. They use a waterless toilet, send dirty laundry home, and they cook with dry heat, not water. As I've mentioned before, power is given to the station by means of giant solar panels. Each panel is over 100 feet long and 30 feet wide. The panels rotate to collect as much solar energy as possible. Each panel produces 31 kilowatts every second. When the station is facing the sun, it creates more energy than required. The excess energy is stored in batteries to be used when the station is on the dark side of the Earth. So what exactly is the International Space Station used for? 
Why are countries all over the world spending so much on the ISS? According to NASA, the mission of the International Space Station is to enable long-term exploration of space and provide benefits to the people on Earth. The ISS is a space exploration utility. It is an outpost, a telescope, a camera, and a data collector all bundled into work. It even acts as a satellite to collect data about the Earth. With six extremely high-tech laboratories, the ISS is the main outer space research facility. On the station, astronauts are conducting thousands of experiments on things such as plant growth, medicine, and effects on human bodies in space. They are risking their lives to do so. Being in outer space shrinks their hearts and elongates their bodies. The ISS is also crucial in finding the cure for cancer, as accelerated plant growth helps with the study of cancer-fighting medicine. The ISS is also used as an experimental facility on human life in space. It is essentially a gateway to new frontiers, as a place where we can study how people can live in space, as a place to experiment on the long-term effects of weightlessness on the human body, and as a test area for adjustment needed to send astronauts to Mars and beyond. All in all, the ISS is an intensely interesting structure of outer space, and is crucial to our lives and to our future. One day, thanks to the ISS, we may find the cure to cancer, or maybe find a way for humans to live on other planets. The ISS is truly outstanding.